Hello, Flimsy Lunch Tray here, and welcome to the World of Worship's development blog, as we're going to be discussing development blog 372, and something is wrong every time I've tried to record a video with this file. No idea what's going on, but it keeps corrupting my video file, so I'm using OBS to now record this, so hopefully this goes through, third time's the charm, and I've talked about this twice now for almost over 20 minutes each, uh, so... Perhaps I'm well versed in this now. So, the development blog. So there's a lot of things happening here uh, in this development blog. Early access to Japanese cruisers, graphical improvements, battle pass, new season of clan battles, brawls, and other news. Close testing 11.10. So, the early access to Japanese light cruisers. In update 11.10, early access to Japanese light cruisers begins. Players will be able to earn a new temporary resource with Japanese tokens. So. This is the same thing they've done with every other early access event to new ship lines being introduced into the game uh, where you have to complete combat missions, special combat missions, in order to earn the tokens for the early access event. So you can use these in the armory to acquire consecutive bundles with early access ships and then they'll probably sell Japanese tokens if you want to keep going down those consecutive bundles. Um, and then with the release of update 12.0, Japanese tokens will be exchanged for credits at a rate of 1 to 9,000. So if you have any tokens left over, Wargaming uh, World of Warships will credit you at least uh, with some monetary earnings. New um, permit camouflage for Shimanto, Takahashi, and Yodo, Don Harmony. So this is what it looks like. It's, meh. it's okay, but uh, I don't think it's so cool. They're also going to update the port of Zipangu. So um, you're gonna make it look a little bit more nicer with the introduction of the this new ship line. So makes sense. Uh, graphical improvements. Um, work continues on visual upgrades in our game during update 11.10. They've added new HD textures to the following maps being Mountain Range, North, Strait, Estuary, and Northern Lights. North, I'm quite excited about, and I'll tell you why, as well as Northern Lights. So. Here's mountain range, so it kind of this like military base installation. I don't even know if they have something like this already on the map. I've never seen this if they do. Uh, mountain range, I think it's it's a really interesting map. Um, it's um, I don't feel like I get it enough. I don't wouldn't mind seeing it more in my um, matchmaking. North, uh, you have this shark whale thing, so that'd be interesting to see what island they end up putting this on. Almost looks like it's near the center cap, I think. Yeah, or it's or, or this already exists in the game. Just miss it. And don't pay attention. And it's kind of cool seeing this because this reminds me of like Norway because um, I, I live in Norway um, with a lot of these r rock coastal futures with these red houses. It's very Norwegian. Um, so the coastal future is definitely very Norwegian uh, geography, very naturistic. Um, and this um, was really cool when I, I saw this uh, going through here. I actually got excited um, because this, these actually exist, these three swords. Um, in the region, they're called Svadi Fjell, uh, swords in the rock, swords in the mountain, if you will. Um, and they're not actually like this tall because these are just massive towering over the trees, but they've just um, made them look bigger because they want you to be able to notice when you're fighting in the map, in the game. Um, but I actually live like five minutes away from these. Um, I live off of the fjord where these swords exist uh, in Stavanger. And if you, real life, uh, if I stood beside, I maybe even put a picture on the screen if I remember to, I'd be like probably like this tall standing next to this. So yes, I'm as tall as a tree. <laughs> So that'll be interesting to see, but I'm really excited to see about this in the game, giving some more uh, Norway attention, especially with the um, ships, Norwegian ships they're going to introduce at some point in the game. Uh, I think, what, the winter next year? Straight, we now have forest fires with a plane that dumps water on. Estuary, kind of get more of this um, more of a pan Asian map. And the Northern Lights, um, I really like this map because of the Northern Lights, also known as the Award Borealis. Um, 
So really cool. Um, and an Aurora shader has been added to the sky in the ladder map, making this phenomena uh, appear more realistic. So these, basically, if you're underneath them, they just dance in the sky above you. You can actually even see these from Stavanger a couple times a month, actually. Um, they're not right above your head. Um, you have to look north towards like Bergen um, and you'll see them in Stavanger multiple times a month. So um, I like seeing them, seeing them from our the view of our home. So really neat. And of course the vegetation, how could World of Warships or Gaming forget about the vegetation? So they've improved them on all maps and a surf effect has been added to all maps with HD textures. So um, things are looking a little bit more realistic per se in the game. Um, they also added the effect of water being displaced by moving ships um, to improve and make things look more realistic. So um, I do welcome the changes, um, graphically speaking. It makes the game uh, a bit more enjoyable uh, to take in, but of course, um, they can't fix bugs or you know broken matchmaking. Uh, but of course, the graphics department team at World of Warships does a phenomenal job. So, uh, what effects and dynamic reflections have been added to all ship surfaces? So you can actually see here. There's like a wave goes alongside the ship, and then you can see the outline of the water and that splashed alongside the ship and it kind of is a little bit reflective maybe per se or is shiny here on the Force Sherman. Uh, so that'll be interesting to see what it looks like in game. And then I'm pretty sure this is like the Des Moines or maybe it's Salem here. Um, so that's pretty cool. But this looks like the steel camouflage or silver. Uh, the big thing in this um, blog for update 11.10 is the battle pass. So uh, short for BP. Um, they're going to introduce this into the game and it's going to basically follow each update in the game and it's they're active until the next update drops into the game. So you can see um, when you're a newer player and you drop in to see what is Battle Pass, they give you a brief explanation with some windows to go through here. And here it shows offers the progression of levels which can be achieved by completing missions and earning points. The Battle pass consists of a progress bar broken down into levels which you see here that require battle pass points to complete starting with version 11.10 these points will become a reward for completing daily and weekly combat missions okay cool to see so they're tying that in there will be two reward chains available there's free and paid so they will have a single progress bar again this but access to rewards from the paid chain will need to be purchased this can be done at any time, and after the purchase, you will receive all the rewards at the paid chain tied to previously completed levels. So let's say you go through your free version, your free chain of the battle pass, and you're up to level six you've completed, and then you decide, I wanna pick up the enhanced pass, the uh, paid chain. You purchase it, and then you uh, automatically get um, the previous thing. So that's kind of a, another allure to purchasing the uh, paid chain. So um, here you can see back to port. So this is probably gonna be something when you're on your port screen where you see armory, rank, um, all those things on the left side of your screen. It's probably just gonna be an, another option added to the left side. So you can see we have progress, or typo, spelling error being progress. Uh, missions, um, and then what is the battle pass? Upgrades and bonuses. Uh, level 1 battle pass with information, 0 of 10, battle pass points with information there. So it's kind of look like a little gym almost, if you will. Enhance pass and collect rewards. Here you can see the level. So we have between 1 to 40 here. And you can see with the free chain, um, these look like try your luck containers because they have dice on them, um, which I guess these... The try your luck containers are nice because they increase uh, your pity mechanic and picking up a super container. And it fills the bar a little bit more quickly with try your luck containers. Uh, so there you have that for you. Uh, free XP. And then you can see ultimately when all said and done, you'll get a super container and half a million credits. So you probably won't get anything greater than a super container through the other um, 33 or 32 um levels that you're not able to see here 
And then with the enhanced pass, you can see you're getting something every level you complete. So again, uh, another way of Wargaming alluring you to picking up, purchasing the enhanced pass. And uh, you'll earn something as great as a premium ship and a 10 point commander. So probably gonna be some research burr points, steel, coal, um, super containers that you can't see, um, but we will be able to once it drops in the game. The free chain will include all the rewards that the player could receive for daily, weekly, and monthly combat missions before the release of version 11.10, namely various containers, free and elite XP, credits, coal, steel, research points, and port slots. Additional rewards will be available in the paid chain, including coal, research points, uh, credits, free and elite experience, steel, as well as economic bonuses. So they're kind of giving you a little more of an idea of what you would have in the paid chain versus the free chain. The final reward of the paid chain in version 11.10 will be the Tokachi. Uh, this is a tier 7 Japanese premium cruiser, has uh, 6 turrets, so 12 guns, and 610mm uh, torpedoes. Uh, so that's what you'll earn through the version 11.10. So I'm going to guess that every update, they're going to have a premium ship available for you. Maybe it changes from tier 7, maybe it goes tier 8, maybe it goes tier 6. And buying access to a paid chain will also make it possible to buy additional battle pass levels for doubloons. So my thinking here is that it's going to be rather similar to how they do Dockyard. So let's say you decide to go ahead and pick up the enhanced pass and you've already done the combat missions uh, for the battle pass and you're up to the 7,500 free XP you've already earned. So what they're gonna do is I think is if you want to, you can go ahead and purchase each of the um, next levels for doubloons. So let's say you have deep pockets, you're a whale, you can't wait, you want what's next. You can spend doubloons and go ahead and pick up uh, the next levels here. So, um, and this is in the paid chain. Um, so just another way for Wargaming to make more money. Um, so, I mean, that's what the battle pass is. It's a way for them to make more money. Um, so that's going to be interesting to see. And then to complete the entire battle pass, you will need fewer points than you can get for all combat missions, which allow you to complete the battle pass, even if you miss some of the task. If you continue to complete combat missions after completing the battle pass, you will receive fixed additional rewards. So let's say you decide to go ahead and whale through the remainder of your enhanced pass um, levels here, and you still have combat missions yet to um, complete, and you do complete them, then you're gonna, as compensation, you're gonna get uh, fixed additional rewards uh, to keep in mind. So um, another reason for you to go ahead and spend money on the enhanced pass. They'll have more information about what the battle pass will look like in more details. For now, we'll just have to see uh, what happens. I'll do another video on the battle pass when the time comes. Typically, I this is a free to play multi, uh, massive multiplayer game. And I always encourage players to not feel like you have to spend money in the game. Um, you can play it completely for free. Um, so we'll have to see how much this enhanced pass would cost. We'll have to see how much uh, each level would cost via the balloons. So I never encourage spending money in this game, only if you um, have the resources to do so. Um, because realistically, you can only, I mean, Spend so much money a month, those who are deeper pockets or whales tend to spend um, several thousand dollars a month on this game, uh, which is insane that uh, that those who spend money in the game, the whales, kind of the 1%, um, they have, you know, whales and those like super whales um, help keep this game going apparently uh, versus players maybe like you're like me where you don't spend too much money on the game just you know every few months you might uh pick up something new clan battle seasoned um it's going to be season octopus in 11.10 there's going to be seven versus seven format again with tier 10 ships with no aircraft carriers or submarines i was thinking we'd see aircraft carriers again soon because i'm pretty sure two three months ago there was the comment made that in a, it was in a dev blog news article or said maybe on um, in a video the Wargaming did that soon aircraft carriers would return to their rightful place in clan battles. I'm pretty sure that was a comment about clan battles 
And I don't think aircraft carriers ever had white full place in clan battles to begin with, so it's good to see that they're not going to be around. Because um, tends to be players won't, uh, clans won't actually participate when you have aircraft carriers in it because it just ruins the competitive meta that clan battles is. This season will start off the following restrictions. A team can have no more than two battleships as well as a total of no more than three Marceau or in Cablair combined. More restrictions may be introduced and existing ones change during the season. So probably you're going to see typically two battleships, three cruisers, two destroyers, or it could be two battleships, uh, two cruisers and three destroyers. Probably you're going to see you know, Nevsky, Des Moines, Moskva. Um, yeah. So you'll see probably radar cruisers most likely at the tier 10 meta, uh, Minotaur, even possibly. Brawls is coming back for four weeks. Um, so you're going to have a four versus four with tier five ships, no more than two battleships, two cruisers, two destroyers. Uh, five versus five on tier five ships, no more than three battleships, three cruisers, and three destroyers. There's no comments made about... Um, Carriers or submarines, which I guess they don't have to since there are no tier um, five submarines or aircraft carriers at this point in time. So um, just battleships, cruisers, and shores is all you're going to see. Um, Brawl 3, 1 versus 1, tier 10 ships. Submarines are not allowed to participate. So that would be miserable if they were allowed to participate. Uh, Brawl 4, 1 versus 1, tier 7 ships. Then you have Black Friday events coming back. Uh, if you're a newer player, I'll go ahead and kind of hit some details here with you. Um, so each Black Friday event each year, they introduced um, ships that already exist in the game, but in their B version or uh, black. So they're having the black versions of Napoli, Kursarge, Mainz, Jakalov, and Shinonomi. Um, so just another way for Wargaming to make more money. So if I was to sum up this blog, it's about we're giving make more money. <laughs> uh, Shinonome, you can actually go ahead and pick up in a campaign uh, for free. Um, and now for some reason I'm wondering if they actually pulled that out of the that campaign out of the game. Wow, I don't even remember right now. I'll have to check. And I don't remember the name of the campaign either. There's only a couple of them. So if it's still available, you can pick up the Shinonome. Um, it's a decent tier 6 Japanese destroyer. I enjoy playing it. Some themed flags and patches being introduced. And you're going to have two types of Black Friday 2022 containers. So they have Black Friday 2021, 2020, 2019 containers. Um, and the, ver the difference here is that you have your regular Black Friday containers, so being this guy. And then you have Black Friday premium containers. In Black Friday regular containers, basically um, you have a chance of picking up ships, um, a quantity of earning X amount of doubloons, coal as an example. Um, but in the Black Friday premium containers, you will have, have a typically a higher increased chance of picking up premium ships, um, the, the black version ships. Um, your quantity of earnings for something like coal or doubloons will be greater than that of the regular container. And um, the difference um, as well is that the Black Friday containers, they tend to give more of the, the regular ones out if you complete a combat mission for free or a cheaper amount of, uh, with doubloons purchasing them, where the Black Friday containers are more limited in how you might be able to earn them. And to purchase them is going to be more cost in doubloons than the Black Friday container because um, with these uh, loot boxes, if you will, your chances of earning greater rewards is greater than the regular container. Um, so I'll have a video. I do a video at each year for every Black Friday event. So I'll do one when as soon as it hits the game. The naval base port has been updated to mark the event. So you can see um, some different things that they've added into to celebrate Black Friday. So I'll switch it up a little bit, if you will. There's also some of these other changes taking place in the game. The group of camouflage is labeled special and the exterior tab has been divided into two. So now it's special and trophy. And they added the ability to sell camouflage from these groups. Previously, for some reason, you couldn't sell camouflages from special. Um, I was just perplexed by that when I first checked it out. Now they decided that you should be able to. So 
it's, uh, that's welcomed. You're also going to have a new heroic achievement uh, added into the game called Reconnaissance in Battle. And I actually really welcome, uh, welcome this. I think it's going to be very good to have this in the game. The achievement will be rewarded for fulfilling all the following conditions, which are two. The first is the main one, which is accumulating spotting damage to enemy ships. And that damage must be at least 20% of the nominal HP of all ships of the enemy team. Then secondly, you must deal damage to enemy ships yourself. So damage must be at least 5% of the total nominal HP of all enemy ships, which this is actually not too difficult to get. I think the reason why they added this second um, tag on here is that you they don't want you simply just cruising around the back of the map. Um, or I say back of the map, um, cruising on the map undetected the entire time and never find your guns or dumping torpedoes once in the match. They want you to contribute some so you're not just playing passively. Um, so this is good. I wish that they would make rewards. Um, well, you would be rewarded for your spotting via base experience because um, right now you don't earn any base XP for spotting. I've had games in Kagero or Yugamo where I've done over 100,000 spotting damage and I get nothing for it. At least now I'll actually be able to get, you will as a player, be able to pick up an achievement as a pat on the back for, hey, we acknowledge that you were spotting and contributing to your team in this way. So this is a good thing. I gladly welcome it. You're also you're gonna be introducing a Pan-Asian unique commander. Um, they're still working on some things and testing with that. He's going to have the enhanced skills with aircraft carriers of improved engine boost, both to the engine boost duration for squadrons plus 75%. I think stock it's 6% if I'm not mistaken. Battleships, emergency repair specialist, consumable cooldown for damage control party and repair party minus 4%. Um, otherwise standard is negative 3%. So I think they could actually... I would welcome them like increasing this to like negative 5% or something. So also vigilance, uh, torpedo acquisition range plus 35%. I don't remember what standard is. I think it's like 20, 25 or 30% right now. And sorry if you hear a squeaky blind in the background, it's automatic. Uh, cruisers and destroyers, equipment master, consumable action time plus 12.5%. Standard is plus 10%. The commander will also have the following talents. Increased combat readiness, activation condition, getting the reconnaissance in battle. Um, bonuses, main battery gun reload time and aircraft preparation time, negative 20%. Um, works one time per battle. So this is really cool. Um, this will be interesting, especially for the Pan-Asian cruisers and destroyers. Um, and, you know, aircraft preparation time, so... Hmm. Are we getting a Pan-Asian aircraft carrier? Um, I think with Halsey, if you activate Confederate, I think it's, I think it's 20%. I know with Yamamoto Isuroku, it's negative 34% if you get the Kraken Unleashed activating the second wind talent. So um, you can't stack it just once per battle. Master of Torpedo Attacks, the activation condition is to hit enemy ships with six... Uh, torpedoes six times, so six torpedo ribbons. Bonuses, your speed of your torpedoes will be increased by plus 5%. Your reload time of the torpedo reload booster consumable, negative 25%. So if you know in the game already, the time it takes for your torpedo reload booster to come off cooldown is insanely long. So this is welcome for the um, Pan-Asian destroyers and cruisers. Charges of the torpedo reload booster, you get an additional charge. So this is great. So it works one time per battle. So my recommendation to try to activate this uh, talent when it comes into the game is if you can position yourself well early on in the game, dump all your torpedoes, hit the torpedo reload booster um, to try to get those six hits. Uh, so you're probably going to be targeting a, um, you know, a gap in between the islands, a uh, contested area, like a, a cap capture point or if you know those battleships that tend to go a certain direction earlier on in the map so then uh, you can get these bonuses uh, having faster torpedoes and a um, quicker reload time on your torpedo reload booster consumable now emergency stocks activation condition receiving 1.5 million potential damage bonus ship consumables reload time negative 6.5 percent 
can trigger multiple times per battle. So you can stack this potential damage, you know, so um, what, 13% if you get 3 million potential damage. And at first I was like, but it's so hard, I feel like with Pan-Asian cruisers, because they're light cruisers, Pan-Asian destroyers who actually pick up potential damage to begin with. I mean, it's 1.5 million versus the French commander who is 2 million potential damage to get plus 8% ship speed and you can trigger that talent multiple times per battle but then i remembered that they're actually introducing a pan-asian battleship it's going to be basically um it's very similar to the Sovetsky soyuz um the tier 9 russian battleship so i was like oh okay well that makes sense <laughs> um so you'll probably be seeing um that commander definitely used on that rush uh pan-asian Hashtag Russian battleship. Because um, you'll be able to tank a lot of damage. It's a battleship with six guns. And I think it even has greater accuracy than the Sovetsky Soyuz. So, please note that this commander is undergoing testing. During which the improved skills and talents may change. The final information will be published on the official portal of the game. So, let's see what that looks like when he hits the game. New content added to the game. They added a patch for the Steam 5th anniversary as well as um, background. And then Shinomi commemorative flag. Five years on Steam permanent camouflage for King George V. Uh, this camouflage, uh, permanent camouflage was a result of a contest they did um, earlier this year where this player, um, don't see his name quoted here, um, had this bad boy for King George V. So that's really cool. So the gentleman or lady who created this camouflage did a fantastic job. I think it's really awesome. Expendable camouflage, five years in the Microsoft store. Bleh. Like, I mean, when you go from this to this, it's like, nah, like, this is just really cool. So they'll have details on how to obtain this content later on. So this is all there is for this development blog. And if for some reason this does not work, with the OBS software I'm running right now, I give up. <laughs> uh, but I think this should work fine. I don't think the um, video file can be corrupted in any sort of way. So I should be able to create a video as normal after this being my third attempt. So if you like today's video, make sure to give a thumbs up. If you appreciated, you know, spending 50 minutes to now be able to record this video, adding on another 20 plus minutes uh, that you appreciate the hard work. It lets me know that I'm on track with what you gentlemen and ladies are wanting to see here in the game. If you are liking the content and you're not subscribed, I really encourage you to subscribe. Um, I do this for y'all. And so I wouldn't mind the support uh, through just subscribing and you get to see maybe some more content that you like as I do polls and I try to engage with you um, and respond to your comments. So I appreciate it. So until next time, take care.